I'm so good to see you. Welcome to Crem2 News at Noon. I'm Laura Papetti. And we do begin with breaking news. A man is now in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after getting hit by a train. We're going to take a live look here at the scene right now. Spokane police have told Crem2 that someone was hit by a train at 7th and Cannon. He was reportedly laying down between two tracks and police said the man then stood up and walked in front of the train as it approached. We'll certainly continue to follow the situation and bring you updates as we get them always on crim.com and of course tonight on Crim2 News First Step 4. And we do have continuing coverage this afternoon as well. Police are investigating a shooting near Shadle Park High School. Crem 2's Brandon T. Jones has the very latest on that investigation. Well, yeah, it seems like a normal day at this point, but that was far from the case yesterday. As much of this road was blocked off with lots of law enforcement, neighbors who were concerned, trying to figure out what those loud pops that they heard were coming from. And actually, we got a chance to learn more overnight from law enforcement, and they were informing us that all of this began with a suspect who was eventually shot and sent to the hospital with life threatening injuries and uh, I want to kind of read off some of the details that we were able to learn. According to police, this whole incident, as mentioned, started as a dispute between the suspect and a tow truck driver. Officers say the man pulled out a knife and a gun before firing around. He then fled the scene before police caught up with him near a field here at Shadow Park where a baseball game was being played. Around 6.14 p.m., officers informed other units that the suspect was running south on foot, and within a minute of that, officers confirmed shots were fired. Three SPD officers fired their guns. The suspect was struck multiple times and was transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Police say a gun was found on the suspect, and as for the officers who fired their guns, they have been placed on administrative leave as the investigation takes place. But again, I just want to reiterate that school was able to start on time earlier this morning and there were no delays and everything at this point seems like it's running on a smooth and normal schedule. But for now reporting here in North Spokane, Brandon T. Jones, Crim2 News. Earlier this week, accused murderer Brian Koberger submitted his alibi. He said he was going for a nighttime drive near Whitman County Park when four University of Idaho students were killed. Jack Culkin from our Pennsylvania station talked to a few lawyers to get their take on that defense. Alibis are strong if there's eyewitnesses that can put you away from the scene of a crime. That's not this alibi. Brian Koberger's alibi is weak, according to former Luzerne County Assistant District Attorney Jarrett Ferentino. The document, which was filed by Koberger's defense team earlier this week, states that he spent a lot of time running, hiking, and driving around after moving to Pullman, Washington in June of 2022. His lawyers claim Koberger took a particular interest in Wahai Park, which is where the Monroe County native claims he was the night of the murder, looking at the moon and the stars, about 30 miles away from where the murders took place in Moscow, Idaho. Ferentino thinks prosecutors will be able to pick apart Koberger's alibi. It doesn't say Brian Koberger was back in Washington in bed and asleep. It says he was in his 2015 white Hyundai out and about. Weak alibi is the defendant himself just saying, I wasn't there. I was at home in a different location playing video games. So this is moderate, and I would say it's on the stronger side of moderate. The alibi also states the defense can prove Koberger's location through phone records analyzed by an expert witness. A piece longtime defense attorney Brett Regal of Monroe County thinks could help the accused killer's case. If the data shows the phone was moving around in a pattern that's consistent with somebody driving around sort of aimlessly, that might be helpful to him um, more so than if it's data that suggests the phone went to a particular location and was there. With the release of the alibi, one thing both former prosecutor Ferentino and defense attorney Regal agree on is it could be a while before Koberger goes to trial. A case like this that's receiving, you know, statewide region-wide, nationwide, and possibly even international attention, it's going to, to take a bit longer to find a, uh, an unbiased, impartial jury. This case is not going to go to trial for a significantly long time. This is going to be delayed at least until the summer of 2025, as I see it. Jack Culkin, Newswatch 16.
It is 12.05 right now and the clock is ticking for victims of last summer's destructive wildfires in order for them to register for federal assistance. That deadline is coming up tomorrow. Victims can apply in person for FEMA assistance and aid from the Small Business Administration. The SBA loans offer up to $500,000 to replace or repair a primary residence, while the FEMA aid would provide money for victims to use for things like temporary housing and repairs on their home. Meantime, the in-person recovery centers in both Medical Lake and Elk will remain open until April 27th. After that, the help will only be available by applying online. All right, 12.06 right now. We're going to take a pause on the day's news, and we're going to go out to what appears to be a beautiful afternoon with Thomas Patrick. Hi, Thomas. Hey, Laura. Yeah, it actually feels really nice out. The sunshine is awesome. There's your live picture from our cam camera that overlooks Riverfront Park. I mean, it is blue skies on the image. It's, of course, blue skies all around us as well. No threat for any rain or storms or grapple for today. We're just in for a completely sunny day. In fact, I think the observation of mostly sunny as opposed to completely sunny almost feels a little bit dubious, but it is windy out here. We've been feeling that breeze from every which uh, side swirling around us. A 30 mile per hour wind gust has already been recorded out of the north and east. So what generally tends to be a decently cool breeze, at least being offset by some of the sunshine that we are getting. And there are those clear skies. You basically got to go to far north Idaho to find any kind of cloud cover in the vicinity. Tomorrow's even better. In fact, Saturday's easily the pick day this week because Sunday turns not just a little bit cooler, but a lot windier as well. Coming up, we'll show you how strong the wind gusts are going to be for these next three days and when the rain over the weekend will be most likely.